The 1976 Argentine coup d'état was a right-wing coup that overthrew Isabel Perón as president of Argentina on 24 March 1976. A military junta was installed to replace her, this was headed by Lieutenant General Jorge Rafael Videla, Admiral Emilio Eduardo Massara and Brigadier General Orlando Ramón Agosti. The junta took the official name of National Reorganization Process and remained in power until December 10, 1983. The coup had been planned since October 1975, and the United States Department of State learned of the preparations two months before its execution. The American Secretary of State Henry Kissinger would meet several times with Argentinian military leaders after the coup, urging them to destroy their opponents quickly before outcry over human rights abuses grew in the United States. Prelude to the coup President Juan Perón died on July 1, 1974. He was succeeded by his wife Maria Estela Martínez de Perón, affectionately called Isabelita. Despite her claim as the country's rightful ruler, Maria rapidly lost political influence and power. A group of military officials, tasked by Perón himself to aid Maria, took control in an effort to revitalize Argentina's deteriorating political and social climate. This shift in governance paved the way for the ensuing coup. On February 5, 1975 Operativo Independencia was launched. This Vietnam-style intervention aimed to eliminate the guerrillas in the Tucuman jungle, who had maintained strongholds in the area as early as May 1974. In October the country was divided into five military zones, with each commander given full autonomy to unleash a carefully planned wave of repression. On December 18, a number of warplanes took off from Moron Air Base and strafed the Casa Rosada in an attempt to overthrow Isabel Perón. The rebellion was brought to a halt four days later through arbitration by a chaplain. However, the military did succeed in removing the only officer remaining loyal to the government, Air Force Commander Hector Fautario. Fautario drew harsh criticism from the Army and Navy owing to his vehement opposition to their repressive plans, and for his refusal to mobilize the Air Force against the guerrillas' strongholds in the north. Fautario was Videla's final obstacle in his pursuit of power. By January 1976 the guerrilla presence in Tucumán had been reduced to a few platoons. In the meanwhile, the military, fully backed by the local elite and the United States, bided its time before ultimately seizing power. The coup Shortly before 1 a.m., President Martínez de Perón was detained and taken by helicopter to the El Mesador residence. At 3.10 all television and radio stations were interrupted. Regular transmissions were cut and replaced by a military march, after which the first communique was broadcast. People are advised that as of today, the country is under the operational control of the Joint Chiefs General of the Armed Forces. We recommend to all inhabitants strict compliance with the provisions and directives emanating from the military, security or police authorities, and to be extremely careful to avoid individual or group actions and attitudes that may require drastic intervention from the operating personnel. Signed, General Jorge Rafael Videla, Admiral Emilio Eduardo Massara and Brigadier Orlando Ramón Agosti. A state of siege and martial law were implemented, as military patrolling spread to every major city. The morning was seemingly uneventful, but as the day progressed, the detentions multiplied. Hundreds of workers, unionists, students, and political activists were abducted from their homes, their workplaces, or in the streets. Topic. Subsequent events The junta assumed the executive power until March 29 when Videla was designated president. Congress was disbanded and an entity known as Legislative Advising Commission Cal from its initials in Spanish assumed a legislative role. Human activists state that in the aftermath of the coup and ensuing dirty war, some 30,000 people, primarily young opponents of the military regime, were disappeared are killed. Military men responsible for the killings often spared pregnant women for a time, keeping them in custody until they gave birth, before killing them and giving their infants to childless military families. 
Kissinger privately assured the military regime that they would have the full support of the United States government in their war and associated actions, a promise that was opposed by the U.S. ambassador to Argentina at the time, Robert Hill. The 24th of March anniversary of the coup is now designated the Day of Remembrance for Truth and Justice. Topic. See also. 1973 Chilean coup d'état References <references>